how do you sleep train your baby? You hear about sleep training and how some parents' lives have changed through sleep training, but how? You read on Google about this method and that method and you find as much positive information as negative. You're left confused and have no idea where to start or whether you even should. I hear you. It's a minefield. So in this video, I'm going to put it to you simply and share with you how to sleep train a baby or young child for that matter because it works for all of them. But before I delve in and save you from this confusion, I'd love for you to do me a favor and hit subscribe if you're watching on YouTube or listening to the podcast. Go for it now and we'll get on with this episode. Okay. The reason it's also confusing out there is because, put simply, there is no single or simple answer to sleep training. What works wonders in one case will make things worse in another case, even in the same family, under the same routine. So it's no wonder it's a minefield, right? I've worked with parents who breezed it with four children and then came unstuck with their fifth completely scratching their heads as to why, when they've raised four babies already. It's about the unique child, and when you know what's going to suit them, it all becomes clear. So first and foremost, you've got to be in the right mindset for sleep training. As the parent or caregiver, you have to be ready and want to sleep train your child. You can't do it because someone else told you to, or you feel that you should. It has to be because you can see the benefits it will have on your little one and for you, and you're ready to be all in and commit to helping your little one sleep. Why is this important? Because otherwise you'll quit at the first hurdle or you'll second guess every step of the plan. You'll doubt yourself or your sleep, sleep consultant and without even realizing it, you'll self-sabotage. That's right, one tough night and you'll decide it's not working and can't work for you and you'll self-sabotage rather than dig in deeper and conquer the challenges. So your mindset is the first thing to address when you begin sleep training your little one. Next, you need a plan. Trying this thing and then that thing will just lead to confusion and worse sleep. So you need to decide what the best approach is for your little one and for you. And then get really clear on how to implement that approach with all the people who will be caring for your child. So they need to all be on board. For example, if your little one is super alert, they may just be more stimulated and agitated by your attempts to soothe and reassure and might respond better to less fuss and interaction. Whereas a little one who relies heavily on you doing something to or for him in order to get to sleep will need you to very gradually wean them off that thing while still being very present and hands-on in the process. In my book, The Sleep Nanny System, um, I talk about my fade out approach and my regulated responding technique. One of these will certainly suit your child, but it will need some customization as every little one and every scenario is unique. But equip yourself with the knowledge so that you can implement your plan with confidence. In deciding on the best approach to take, or at least to begin with, because approaches can sometimes change and evolve, two key things you need to consider are, how does your little one fall to sleep? Are there any particular associations with things that send them off to sleep? And the other thing is, how much sleep are they getting overall? Is it enough and is it timed right for them? So being awake for too long between sleeps can lead to overtiredness as well as not getting enough sleep and being overtired is often the cause of a poor night's sleep. There is always work to be done in one if not both of those things. When you sleep train your baby or child, you must be clear in the messages you are sending them, a clear and reliable message that they can depend upon. If your baby thinks that you might feed them or you might not, or you might take them into your bed with you or you might not, it's confusing and they don't know what to do. Keep your message clear even if they send you a bunch of mixed messages. You're the one leading the way here and your baby needs you to do that. The last thing you need to do to sleep train a baby or child is to be consistent with how you respond to them. Each and every time they wake in the night, you need to be sure that no matter who tends to them, they get the same response and then they go through those same motions for getting back to sleep. 
Of course, there may be times with a young baby when feeding is needed and times when it isn't, but you can still be sure to follow the same approach to the resettling to sleep after the feed. So, shall we recap? How do you sleep train a baby? Well, first of all, you have to get your mindset in check. Then you need to decide on the approach you're going to use so that you can conform that plan of action. You can't sleep train effectively without a plan. Then you need to follow the plan with clear messages and total consistency. That's it. Follow these steps and your baby will be sleeping happily through the night in no time. Until next time, be happy, be healthy and sleep soundly. Thanks so much for watching. If you've liked anything about this episode, then please leave a comment below and hit subscribe for more episodes like this. If any of your friends would benefit from seeing this video, then please do share it with them using the hashtag the sleep nanny. And we look forward to seeing you again real soon.